sweet insomniacs and tingle chasers of other varieties and welcome to another episode of ASMR in the best possible timeline. Today's episode is going to be part uh, ramble, part me reading, part uh, a full moon ceremony, and part inaudible whisper. Throughout the ramble, uh, there will be times where I invite you to do something. You are invited to do that in the physical 3D world, but you are equally inspired and asked to do that in your imagination. I don't know if you guys know this, but actually your unconscious mind cannot tell the difference between something that you are imagining and something that you're actually doing. This is why visualization techniques work and are so popular. They're even taught to members of professional athletic teams for this reason. If you visualize something, your unconscious mind thinks it's real, and that is why quantum physicists and other quantum hackers like myself spend so much time and energy embodying the emotions that we want to possess. So, um, before we get started, I want to say that you could potentially choose to pause the video in a moment and prepare for this experience if you want to have a shared 3D experience with me right now, full moon style. In order to do that, I invite you to get cozy and comfortable. You might want to wear all black as I have because this is going to be a funeral for our past selves in that former timeline. You might also want to get a cup of tea. I have lavender and chamomile tea here. It is piping hot. I hope it stays that way. Um, I picked lavender and chamomile because tonight's full moon is in Cancer, and Cancer is a very feminine, soft, vulnerable, nurturing uh, zodiac sign. So if you are inspired to pause the video now and get ready, you might also want to get some sage or candles or anything else that might serve you during this full moon ceremony. Uh, another thing I recommend if you want to practice this is to grab a piece of paper and a pen, as well as a uh, you'll probably need at some point a lighter. Uh, like I said, sage would also be advised, so if you want to pause the video now, uh, you may do so. You may also just leave it playing in the background, as I am going to be drinking tea for a little while and intermittently inaudible whispering.
Chasers, if you are still there and you are working on putting on your black outfit for our full moon funeral or you are uh, getting some sage and candles and sort of just getting set up, I'm going to give you about another 30 seconds of tea slurping audible whispering. Uh, after that point, you might want to pause the video because I'm, I'm ready to get into this. I'm excited. so 
here for it. Um, and she is also like completely alone. over here in Cancer, like all the other signs are over here in Capricorn, not all of them, um, you've got the North Node in Taurus, and Taurus is the closest anything gets to the moon right now, though, which really resonated with me, because all week long I've been like, I just want to be alone, I just want to be alone, like, that's all, I'm journaling about it, um, and then I looked at the chart, and I was like, oh, <laughs> it's not just me. All moon children probably want to be alone right now, and a lot of people, I think, probably want to be alone right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit of this Stephen Forrest book that I mentioned on Maddie's channel, The Inner Sky, about cancers. Um, and he's got a whole part in here, but I'm just going to read a couple paragraphs. Those who are born under the mark of the crab have come here to penetrate dimensions of inner life inaccessible to any previous sign. They arrive fluent in the language of the deep self, the language of emotion. Fascinated by the reactive, subjective aspects of the mind, their lifeblood is protracted process of psychoanalysis, usually self-administered. To feel consciousness, to feel every nuance of life, to shed the shell of numbness that armors us against the slaughterhouse of the world, all of that is the crab's work. Cancer's endpoint, to see the hellish discord of life, to see the cauldron within, and against all odds, against all common sense, to love, to trust and accept all that existence offers. The Cancer's sensing devices are the most delicate in the zodiac. No sign feels with such intensity. The Cancer's goal is to maximize the intensity of its interactions with the world while simultaneously protecting its finely tuned emotional sensibilities. <sighs> so that, that's, that's cancer in a nutshell, I think, and, um, and so this full moon, I invite you to just embody your inner cancer. I don't know if you have any cancer in your chart. If you don't have cancer in your chart, you probably have the fourth house, which is ruled by cancer. I have the four signs of cancer and four signs in the fourth house, so I feel like a pretty good authority to tell you about this cancer full moon, even though I'm a total noob when it comes to astrology. I have been living that cancer lifestyle for 29 years. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm way older than that. I'm like forever 29. That's how old I am. Um, okay, so that is what I wanted to say about cancer. Now I'm going to tell you why we are going to have a funeral for yourself. And uh, at the end of the video, during the funeral, is what we're going to do most of the inaudible whispering. So here we go. Cancer is at 27 or the moon, rather, is at 27 degrees Cancer right now. And, um, on the opposite chart, side of the chart, at 27 degrees Capricorn is where the sun is, and that is why the moon is full. Uh, right next to the sun, at 26 degrees Capricorn, we have Pluto. This is very interesting right there. That means with, um, with Pluto and, uh, just say the sun <laughs> with Pluto and the sun conjunct right next to each other. There's a lot of intense energy going on on that side of the chart and that can be that can have this cancer moon feeling 
emotional. I mean, uh, it's just already like a very emotional sign, but because there's so much going on with the sun in Capricorn and that Pluto in Capricorn, there's a powerful energy on the Capricorn side of the chart. And that is requiring a lot of our like time, energy, focus, and it might leave you overwhelmed, exhausted, vulnerable, and, and weaker. Um, so the moon is asking you right now to get in touch with yourself, to listen to yourself, to nurture yourself, to understand that you might need some extra TLC. Um, and you might need to retreat. You might need to be alone, like the moon is alone right now. So if you feel that cold, that pull, that call, do whatever you have to do to take care of yourself. Nurture yourself. Be alone if you want to be alone. Uh, I posted on my community page the other day. I took the time to deep clean my room. Cancer is all about the home. If there, if I could use two words to describe cancer, it would be like home and emotions. Um, so I, I really, I retreated into my room and into um, just cleaning and myself, and I, I really, I withdrew. not serving you anymore. I mean, 
So yeah, I 
don't know if you know what an what an ujjayi breath or an ocean breath is. This is really lovely, but I'm gonna have to put it in my tea soon. <laughs> uh, an ujjayi breath is um, a yoga technique. I think it's probably on the yoga. Maybe they use it in other yogas as well. And it's a breath. They also call it like an ocean breath because it 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 sounds like the ocean. The point of the breath is to uh, it, it is to hear it. Um, and so it's something that happens when you breathe in, and it sounds something like it takes place like behind where your nose and your throat connect. So it sounds like this. And it's only the inhale that matters. On an outhale, you can do something like an Udhibhaya Yanda breath, where you like squeeze your abdominal muscles. But we don't we don't need to get that intense right now. We're just gonna breathe in with an ocean breath. Hold it for just a moment before exhaling. have been better, but I'm actually having one right now. So again, we're going to inhale. And I want you to exhale as I reach for my tarot cards to pull a card for you folks. I put them here just in case. Uh, I had a hot flash, which I haven't been for a couple days. Shadow to anyone with hot flashes, Femme Essence brand maca changed my life. Um, but every time I like think I don't need it anymore, it corrects me. Okay, so to get the ceremony started, we are going to pull a card from the Spirit Animal deck, because it's the only deck that I have right now. Um, I'm going to put this down. I guess so that the volume doesn't change, I'm gonna put it on my actual lapel. I hope this doesn't make a terrible sound. of the earthworm at some point along the way. The earthworm 
important to remember that they once felt earthworm energy too. This card is a reminder not to be intimidated or lose hope. Mastery takes time and you're on the right track. Besides, rumor has it a beginner's mind offers the most valuable insights. When in balanced, earnest, intelligent, valuable, out of balance, self-conscious, and apprehensive, to bring into balance, speak up, and risk embarrassment. Okay, I feel like that actually goes pretty well into what we're doing next, because we're going to have a little funeral, right? So you would like your sage, you just want to clear out, and again, you don't actually have to light the sage, you can just visualize this, and it works the same on your unconscious mind. Okay, I'm going to try to move this mic again.
you how you feel 
expressing your gratitude towards the past version of yourself that helped you reach this point. Recognize all of his or her hard work and love and, you know, even when we're not being our best selves, we are always doing the best that we possibly can. And so if we have grown out of that and into an understanding that we could have been better, that's not just okay, that's actually really, really, really wonderful. And it's important, I think, to acknowledge that kind of growth. Um, And so we're just going to do another minute or so of tapping sounds and mouth sounds so that you can uh, feel invited to relax, to tingle, and to potentially thank your former self for uh, all of their amazing contributions to the path that led you to this space now where you are on the best 
we're not bringing with us into this reprogramming period that we are going through right now. Okay, and for um, the final aspect of our funeral for our former selves, I want you to either imagine or take out a piece of paper and write down uh, what you are releasing with this full moon. Uh, get specific. Even if you are imagining, I want you to imagine you are writing by hand what exactly you want to leave in the previous timeline. What you want to leave with that former self. Um, Ramdas is, uh, I consider Ramdas my guru. He's fantastic and phenomenal. And if you want, uh, I highly, highly recommend his podcast here and now, Change My Life. Um, and he talks about when things aren't serving you anymore, give them up. He says, you can give them to me. Uh, so you can give it to Ramdas if you want. You can give it to your past self. You can give it to Kali, but be careful with Kali because Kali is brutal. She's the destroyer. Um, she will destroy your obstacles. And sometimes that can be kind of painful. Sometimes your obstacle can be like the job that puts a roof over your head. It'll put you in a better place later, but it can be very uncomfortable. So, give to Kali with caution. But, uh, and don't give it to me because, man, I got enough going on over here. I am not Ramdas. <laughs> but you can give it to Ramdas. Um, you can give it to God. You can give it to your former self. But what are all of the things that you are not bringing into this uh, next version of yourself that is being? programmed in the next couple weeks. This version of you that is going to move forward in the best possible timeline. Again, it could be patterns, it could be relationships, it could be dynamics, it could be energies, it could be emotions or moods or um, disorganization or uh, a lack of self-care or something that's spiritually less evolved than you are now. What are you reprogramming? And in that reprogramming process, what are you leaving behind?
and 